Assalamu alaikum. On behalf of MPAC, the Muslim Public Affairs Council, welcome to our course, The Case Against Extremism, What Does Islam Say? In this lecture and the next few lectures, inshallah, we will be exploring the topic of extremism in some depth using the primary sources of the Quran and the Hadith and trying to collect for you in one place these sources regarding how Islam stands directly and doctrinally against extremism and against its various manifestations. Why this topic? Predominantly because we know, as this Time magazine cover shows, that certain sectors, large sectors in fact, of the American population is indeed Islamophobic. There's a certain perception of Islam that cuts across economic divides, racial divides, political party divides among our fellow citizens. And that perception is that Islam is a religion of extremism and that extremism leads to terrorism. Without a doubt, certain groups of Muslims have done much to fuel this misperception fire and we are here to try to analyze this situation and to ask the right questions in a genuine and objective way. And the questions to consider are, number one, when we say Islam is moderate, is Islam moderate because we are moderate? so we see it through rose-colored glasses or through a moderate tint? Or are we moderate because Islam is moderate and that Islam is the moderating force? And if Islam is indeed moderate, is this a contingent truth or a necessary truth? Now, what do we mean by that? Well, contingent truths are things like the statement, I have an apricot tree in my backyard. It is true, but it doesn't have to be true. It could have been an orange tree or an apple tree. A necessary truth is inherent in the issue to which it attaches. And our stance is that in Islam, moderation is a necessary truth. Moderation is doctrine, and as this cartoon titled Another Islam shows, those who are extremists, certainly those who are terrorists, are completely facing the wrong way in terms of Islamic outlook. So where do we get this statement that moderation is doctrine? in Islam. Well, doctrine in Islam comes from the two main sources of the Islamic faith. First and foremost, the Quran, which we as Muslims believe is the word of God, and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And so let us look at this verse from the second chapter, Surah Al-Baqarah. It is a snippet of verse 143. A'udhu billahi min وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ And it is thus that we appointed you to be the community of the middle way so that you might be witnesses over all mankind or to all mankind. And the verse continues, and the messenger may be a witness over you or to you. So this verse enjoins upon Muslims what in Arabic is known as al-wasatiyya. Al-wasatiyya is moderation. And so from this, we gather that Muslims have to be moderate because they are characterized by this word right here, wasatan, which is this wasatiyya or moderation. However, this is really a definition in the negative. We're saying that Islam is not extremist 
because it is moderate and moderation is the opposite of extremism. Well, does the Quran or do the teachings of the Prophet address the notion of extremism head on and negate it per se? And the answer to that is yes. So let us take a look at these two verses of the Quran. The first is from uh, Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter 5. And these verses are addressed to the people of the book, whoever carries the scripture, and by extension, of course, to the Muslims. And, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ قُلْ يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ لَا تَغْلُوا فِي دِينِكُمْ غَيْرَ الْحَقِّ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا أَهْوَاءَ قَوْمٍ قَدْ ضَلُّوا مِنْ قَبْلُوا وَأَضَلُّوا كَثِيرًا وَضَلُّوا عَنْ سَوَاءِ السَّبِيلِ Say, O people of the scripture, do not go to extremes in your religion beyond the truth, and do not follow the inclinations of a people who had gone astray before. They misled many and themselves strayed from the correctness of the way. And so, the message here is, do not be extreme in your religion. And you notice that I am hovering over this word, which will become very important for us. La taghlu fi dinikum. In Arabic, one of the main terms used for extremism is al ghulu And here the Quran is telling those who are carriers of the scripture, people of the book, la taghlu fi dinikum. Do not be extreme in your faith, because if you do that, you have automatically strayed from the correct path. And a similar verse from chapter 4, Surah An-Nisa. Ya ahl al-kitabi, O people of the scripture, la taghlu fi dinikum wa la taqulu ala Allahi illa al-haqq. Do not be extreme in your faith and do not say anything about God except the truth. And so, we see that here is a categorical denunciation of al-ghulu or extremism in faith and that is then a matter of Quranic doctrine that applies to the Christians, to the Jews, to the Muslims that anyone who claims to be a person of the book following a message or the message of God God's way that he has ordained for humanity is categorically forbidden to be extreme in their faith. Now let's look at the teachings of the Prophet, peace be upon him. He said, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ إِيَّاكُمْ وَالْغُلُوِّ فِي الدِّينِ فَإِنَّهُ أَهْلَكَ مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ الْغُلُوِّ فِي الدِّينِ The Messenger of God, peace and blessings be upon him, is reported to have said, O people, beware of extremism in your religion, for those who came before you were destroyed because of extremism in their religion. Now this hadith, and hadith means a saying or a teaching of the Prophet, appears in the hadith collections of an nisai and um, also in the hadith collection of Ibn Majah, and the chain of narration of this hadith has been judged to be authentic by the scholar Ibn Taymiyyah according to the conditions of Sahih Muslim. Now it is instructive for us to take a look at the context in which this particular hadith appeared. And that context was in the Prophet's farewell pilgrimage, when he asked the young companion Ibn Abbas to collect for him some stones for the symbolic casting out of the devil in Mina. And so Ibn Abbas says that I collected for him the stones, they were pebbles, like the pebbles that would be used for uh, the casting. And when I put them in his hand, it is reported that the Prophet held out his hand to show the people and said, بِأَمْثَالِهَا أُولَاءِ With the likes of these, 
وإياكم والغلو في الدين وإياكم والغلو في الدين فإنما أهلك من كان قبلكم الغلو في الدين And so the Prophet held out these pebbles and said to the people, Yes, with the likes of these, and beware of extremism in your faith, for those who came before you were destroyed because of extremism in their faith. And the Prophet here was giving a very practical application and a very important symbolic lesson. That use the small pebbles in the rajm of the shaitan because you do not want to fall into the trap of thinking that the bigger the stone, the bigger the faith. And that this sort of mindset leads to extremism and he is telling us وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَالْغُلُوَ فِي الدِّينَ Now we need to pause here for a second to reflect on the psyche of a Muslim when he hears these doctrinal statements, whether from the Qur'an or the teaching of the Prophet. This is not a recitation of dry legalistic ordinances. This isn't reading the tax code. This is something that is very emotive to the Muslim. Let me give you a very simple example that I think all of the listeners will be able to identify with. It is like, for example, the emotion that is stirred up when we hear that Patrick Henry stood up during the early days of the American Revolution and said, give me liberty or give me death. I learned this in fifth grade and I've never forgotten it since and it continues to evoke in me emotion. And so when the Muslim hears these statements of the Quran or hears that the Prophet on his farewell pilgrimage was telling his followers, وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَالْغُلُوَ فِي الدِّينَ Beware of extremism in your religion. That is not just a dry legalistic statement, it is a very, very emotional statement to the Muslim. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, is also reported to have said, هَلَكَ الْمُتَنَطِّعُونَ And to have repeated it three times. And this is in the Hadith collection of Sahih Muslim. And so the Mutanatta'un are destroyed. So who are the Mutanatta'un? Well, the Mutanatta'un are those who are the overly strict people, those who go overly deep into religious matters, the extremists, those who go beyond the permissible limits in their statements and actions. And the definition I just gave is according to the great scholar and Nawawi's explanation of the hadith that appears in the collection of Sahih Muslim. And so these then are very general statements. In fact, in the previous hadith where the Prophet was talking about the small pebbles and using this as an example and saying وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَالْغُلُوَ فِي الدِّينَ that beware of extremism in your religion the great scholar Ibn Taymiyyah said that the statement beware of extremism in religion is comprehensive when it is made by the Prophet and includes all types of extremism whether in beliefs or in actions. And the last hadith that we want to touch upon is this hadith which is found in the uh, collection of Al-Tabarani that is known as Al-Mu'jam Al-Kabir. And the hadith says, صنفان من أمتي لن تناله ما شفاعتي إمام ظلوم وكل غال مارق That there are two groups of people from my nation that will not receive my intercession meaning on the Day of Judgment, the Prophet, peace be upon him, would not intercede for them, an oppressive ruler and every extremist renegade. And so again, of course, we see that Islam stands very much against oppressive authoritarian rule and 
against extremism. And so we see that there is very clear, unequivocal, doctrinal grounds to say that Islam is the religion of moderation and that it clearly denounces extremism in belief and in action. Now, for those who want some of these sources collected in one place, it is not easy to find, but it is not impossible to find either. And I'd like to recommend to you a couple of sources. One of them is the book by the great modern scholar Yusuf al-Qaradawi called As-Sahwatu al-Islamiyyatu Bayna al-Juhudi wa al-Tatarruf The Islamic Awakening Between Unbelief and Extremism and a book by another uh, scholar of the modern age Ali ibn Yahya al-Haddadi called Al-Ghulu wa Madahiruhu fi al-Hayati al-Muasira Extremism and its Manifestations in Modern Day Life and a snippet of that latter book called The Forbiddance and Danger of Extremism has been translated into English and is available on the web um, that you can look for it and find it. So this then is the end of part one of our series. But so far, although we've made the statement very strongly, we've also made it generally that extremism is bad and against Islam. But let's say you're making for someone a general statement like avoid unhealthy eating because that's wrong. Well, you've made the statement unequivocally, but you've made it generally. You would then go into some detail. What are the characteristics of unhealthy eating? And then you would talk about not eating too many calories and not eating too much fat, and not eating too many simple sugars, and the need to eat a balanced diet, and the need to include fiber, and the need to include antioxidants, etc., etc. Similarly, when we're talking about extremism, it is not sufficient to simply say, don't be extreme. We need to continue our, ex our exploration of Islamic doctrine, regarding the specific mental characteristics and psychological attitudes of the extremists, for example, being overly rigorous in religious practice uh, and going to extremes in that practice. For example, being judgmental of other people. For example, having an attitude that things are forbidden unless you have some explicit permission to do this or do that. So there are a variety of different mindsets or mental characteristics of extremists. And in the next episodes, inshallah, we will explore a number of those characteristics and take a look at how the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet not only speak in general against extremism, but then also deal with each of the individual psychological attitudes that typify the extremist mentality and denounce that as well and teach against avoiding it and falling into its trap. So hopefully you've enjoyed this presentation and please tune in for the uh, coming episodes, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.